believe God has something for us today. I feel a, a, a stirring in the atmosphere this morning. And we've been talking about the presence of God. And as they were singing that song, I just, man, I don't know about you, but my prayer was, God, let that be my heart. Not just on Sundays or Wednesdays. Let that be my heart 24 hours. Lord, that I want to be overcome with your goodness. I want to see your glory. I want to know your power. I want to be like Paul. God, I want to know the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. More than anything else, I want to know him. I want to have his presence abiding in my life. We're going to be in a, a well-known passage of scripture this morning, Exodus 33. If you want to turn there or just follow along with me today, I believe God has something to share with us today. Exodus 33. I'm going to read several scriptures here at the beginning, and I may go back to a few of them as we go. But let's start in verse 12. We're going to go through verse 23 today. Exodus 33, starting in verse 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And he said, God said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please, show me the glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face. For no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock, so it shall be while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Lord, lead us through this passage. Lord, I have no doubt in my heart that this is your word for us today. And so your word is living, and I believe it will apply to every person that has come today. I believe your word will minister to every life that is here in this place today. So God, let me speak it clearly. Let me, let me speak it, Lord, with a simplicity that we can all understand and know what you're trying to speak into our heart. Let it have anointing and power behind it. And God, let our hearts and ears be open, ready to receive it. And we pray this in Christ's name. Can you say amen? amen? Moses, he's almost, if you read 32 and 33, he's almost, he's got a back and forth going with God. And Moses had that kind of relationship with God, that they would sort of go back and forth. And what had just happened in the previous chapter as Moses was on the mountain and the people, they, they made an idol out of gold. And they came up with this excuse that they do all their gold in the fire and a calf just popped out. And that's, that's not what happened, but that's what, that's what they made it sound like. They were rebellious, they were idolatrous, they turned their back on the living God to worship an idol. And so God would consume them, but Moses stood in the gap before the people. And, and Moses had a dialogue with God and said, God, this is your people. And you're going to have mercy. you got to have mercy on your people. And if you're not going to have mercy on them, then blot me out of your book also. And so Moses and God are going back and forth here from 32 to 33. And here it comes, we come to find out, if you read it, that Moses took the tent and he set it outside of the camp. 
stood from a distance and watched. And the Bible said that Moses had a face-to-face -face talk. In other words, he had a conversation with God like you would have with your friend. And Moses and God spoke. And I want you to know that is an intimate relationship with God. And Moses had this relationship with God. But what got my attention is after Moses had that encounter with God, Moses was not satisfied with that encounter. Moses said, I want to have more. I want to have more of your presence. I want to see your way. I want to see your glory. I want to experience you in a deeper way. And I started thinking about that. And, and more of God, it leads to more of God. And this is sort of the way it works. When we get more of God, we want more of God. And when we get more of God, we want more of God. And that's what's happening in verse 11. Moses got more of God, and he wanted more of God. I don't know about you, but I've never met anyone who said, you know, I swear to God, I just got too much of God. I'm going to have to back down a little bit. I've got too much God in my life. I've never met that person. But everyone I've talked to, especially those in the church, and even those who are not believers, they want to have a relationship with God. They want a deeper relationship with God. And I believe as sons and daughters of God today, you guys would all agree, man, I want more. I want more of His presence in my life. I want Him to overcome my flesh and overcome the issues that I have. I want more of God. Somebody say amen. I've never met someone who had a breakthrough and who was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And then they say, you know, I need to slack off. I was a little too much of God there. I need, to, I need to tone it down a little too much. No, man, you meet someone who's just been newly filled with the Holy Spirit. And they can't get enough of them, Bernita. I mean, they'll go from church to church. If you're not having church, they'll find church somewhere. They want to pray. They want to read their Bible. Man, I can always tell. I've got people that call me a lot. And they'll ask me about a Bible passage. They'll ask me about something God is showing them. And they're always like, I hope you don't mind your calling me. I said, no, man. I love it when somebody gets passionate about God. And it tells me that you've got a taste of His presence. And you just got to have more. And I just want to say to church, well, how different would the church be if we just got more of God and wanted more of God, right? Amen. Sometimes what I see is the opposite, though. It's like, less of God, less of God, and less of God. I want more. And maybe I'm speaking for myself. I don't think so. But I sense that there is a hunger in lives today. And more of God fuels a desire for more of God. I've never read in the Bible. Never read the Bible where God turns down someone who wants more of Him. Have you ever found a passage? I've never found a passage. When someone gets hungry for God, God always fills them. When someone has a desire for more of His presence, God always gives more of His presence. He says, Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. I mean, God, if we can only see what God desires to do in us, if we can only see the amount of anointing and presence that God wants to place upon our life, upon our home, if we could just get a glimpse, I believe just a glimpse of the plan that God has for us walking in His presence, I believe it, it calls us to walk differently and think differently. I think it would, we'd come out of pessimism and all of a sudden be optimistic about our future with Him. You understand what I'm saying? See, the good news is that God has more to give. Moses said, I want more. God didn't say, sorry, but it's all I got. He didn't say, no, that's the limit. God says, I got more. I can show you more. I can, I can show you as much as you're willing, as much as you're able to live through, is what God said. How many knows we haven't reached the limit yet? God says, I can show you, I can show you all the way. In other words, God says, if I show you everything, you wouldn't even live through it. But I can show you enough that you live through it, it'll change your life. And so that challenges me today. 
I've never, I'm a pastor, but I've never had so much of God I thought I was going to die. In this passage, Moses was in jeopardy of losing his life. We'll find out in just a minute. Shows how much power, how much presence our God wants to give us. You think God will do for me what he did for Moses? Well, tell me why not. Is the same God, same spirit? It may not look the same, it may not feel the same, it may not be exactly the same, but what I can tell you today is the Bible tells us that there is more of God. Did you know the book of Acts, that they were not just filled with the Spirit in chapter 2? Did you know if you read the book of Acts, you'll find out that they were filled with the Spirit on several occasions. Did you know that? It's not a, not a one-time experience with God. Did you know that? That He wants to fill us. And we see sometimes they were filled with the Spirit. They spoke with other tongues as God gave them utterance. We see other times they were filled with the Spirit. And they spoke the Word of God with boldness. And they did things that they were scared to do just a few days ago. The Holy Spirit, man, He's got an arsenal of tools that we need to live our lives and to be powerful witnesses for Him. It is unlimited resources through the Spirit of God. And He wants to pour them out on us. And I feel this in my heart today. I feel this down there. Jesus told that lady in John 4, 14, he said, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Just think about that just for a minute. Are you walking right now in the presence of God in such a way you're not even, you're not, you're, you're not in that place of thirst where I don't know where I'm going to get, but you, but you have it welling up within you, and it's overflowing, and you don't even know what to do with it, but share it. you got to get up, and you got to do something. you got to go. you got to serve. you got to go on a mission trip. you got to do something with the, with the gift that's bubbling up inside of you. Can we honestly answer that question today? The answer to depression is more of God. Peace will come with more of God. Loneliness will be eliminated with more of God. The answer is not more money, but it's more of God. The answer is not in a man or in a woman, it's more of God. The answer is not in a pill or in a drink, it's in more of God, right? Is this okay? We need to have our lives saturated with the presence of God. And listen, this world needs more of God. And it's charged with us, the body of Christ. This world needs some Holy Ghost filled people of grace that will share God's love and have within them that well of springing up. Have something to give, something to share. Have an anointing of, about you and upon your life that you can walk up to the lame man at the gate and say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I will give to you. You believe God, God desires that anointing upon us all? It was something God showed me in this passage. Unlike I've ever seen it before personally, was grace. And if you didn't know what grace is, grace is found throughout the Old Testament. You still see grace at work, even though they were under the law. But something God showed me here about the presence of God was that grace always goes before presence. Grace goes before presence. See, God shielded Moses. Moses, I want to see your glory. I want to see you, God. I want to look at 
with you face to face. I want to see your power. I want to know that you're with me. And God said, you die if I do that. But God walked by Moses. As Moses was in the cleft of the rock, as Moses was in a little cave, and God put his hand over it as he passed by. And after he passed by, he removed his hand. And so God, uh, Moses saw the presence. First, Moses saw the palm of God. You ever thought about that? Moses saw the hand of God, and then he saw the glory and the presence of God. Can I offer this to you today that the hand of God is the grace of God? Grace always goes before presence. See, sometimes we get this a little bit mixed up. Sometimes we forget how much grace it takes to experience the presence of God. Did you know just for us to stand and sing today, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Do you understand how much grace that it took from God to give us the favor of to stand in his presence. I just thought about a feeling, but I got goosebumps as we were in the presence of God. And just how much grace it, it takes from God upon our lives that his spirit would come and dwell with us. Every miracle, every sign and wonder, every manifestation of his spirit, every time God blesses us with his presence here me today, it is grace. It is grace. We must never think that it's about us. We must never think that it has something to do with how we're doing it or something to do with how we are acting or performing. We must realize that the best of our best and the best, the best we could ever be, it would not be good enough that God's presence could dwell among us. We must have grace, and grace goes before His presence. I'll show you something. Just hang with me just for a moment here. Hand of God is grace. I believe it represents five things. Grace, the number of grace is five. So watch this. You've got justification. Justification in a legal term. It just simply means our guilt is gone. That's grace, guys. It's grace. Two is redemption. This is a word that's taken out of the slave market when a slave obtained his or her release through the paying of a ransom. A ransom. Jesus paid the price for us and he redeemed us. That is grace. Say that is grace. <laughs> Propitiation. It's one of those church words that we just say and think people know what we're talking about. How many knows they don't? This literally means to gain or regain the favor of. In other words, it means that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross totally satisfied the demands of a holy God. God is holy, and he requires complete holiness. And there's only one man that's ever lived that walked in complete holiness. And his name is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ paid the price. Jesus Christ totally satisfied the demands of our Father, our Heavenly Father, who is completely holy. That is propitiation. Say, that is grace. For his reconciliation. This parallels propitiation. But it means to change from an enemy to a friend. The Bible says we were enemies of God. But Jesus has made us friends of God. Can you say that's grace? And it's grace. Number five is sanctification. That means to be set apart. In other words, Paul, this is not on your notes or the screen, but Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, he says, such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. Hebrews 10, 10 says, by this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. In other words, we have been indwelled by the Holy Spirit and have been set apart by the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, that is grace. So it is justification, redemption, propitiation, reconciliation, and sanctification. Those are the five fingers on the hand of God's grace in my heart and in my way of thinking. And God placed his hand of grace upon Moses so that Moses could see God's glory as it passed by. Grace always comes before the presence of God. And that teaches us something. I'm, I'm getting stuck right here, but I'm going to stay just for a moment. That's 
we want to experience the presence of God in our life, we must recognize God's grace. We want the Holy Spirit to do something wonderful in our church service that we need to recognize and honor the graciousness of our God. We must cast all pride, all selfishness, all these things aside. Say, God, I'm nothing without you. Rest in grace. I just want to tell you, once you recognize His grace, His presence comes in. I feel His presence right now, just because we talked about His it. grace. His grace always comes for His presence. Let's look at it another way. The backside of God. of what's 
going on, but there will come a moment in your walk with him that he will move his hand enough that you will see that the end of the Lord is good and that his purpose is for you. Are you understanding? His purposes for you were good all along, even in the moments that it was dark and you couldn't see what God was doing or understand what he was doing. You will look back one day and see that the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord was upon you all the days of your life. And everything the Bible says in Romans 8 28, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the call according to his purpose. It is those moments when the devil tells you that God has abandoned you. It is those moments that you can stand up and say, no, God has not abandoned me. He's got a plan for my life. And if I can't see right now, it's just because God has shielded me from the details of what's going on in my life. But his plan for me is good. And I will see the goodness of the Lord. Somebody say amen. I just feel emphasis right there today. Right there today. If God showed us all the details every time, we could not live through it. If God laid out your whole life before you, you could not take it in. You would look at it and say, that's going to happen to me. And you would dread that day. You would say, that's going to take place in my family. And you would fear that day. You would look at this and say, that's going to be, I can't wait for that blessing. And you would miss the days. But God shields us from the details sometimes so that we can see the overall goodness and glory of God as he works everything out for our benefit. Do not abandon. Say, I'm not abandoned. The hand of God is on my life. Somebody needs to know that God is passing by. The beginning has been difficult. But the end is going to reveal the glory of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Let me share this last point with you today. Moses desired God's presence more than he desired. hard for us. He desired God's presence more than God's promises. We want the blessings of God, but let us desire the presence of God. We want to see the promises of God take place, but let us desire the presence of God in our lives. not in your notes today, and it's not on the slides today, but if you go back to Exodus 33, verse 1, first few verses, what you will find out is this, and this is what God said, I'm going to paraphrase it just in my language here. I'm going to put it in the Blue Mountain Version. God said to Moses, so Moses, you and your people you don't know about it here. I'm going to give you the promised land. I will sign an angel. Angel's going to go with you. You'll, you'll help you defeat all the enemies. Go on to the promised land. But Moses, I'm not going with you. I will stay here. I've sent a replacement. I'm going to stay here. Because Moses, you go back and read it. He said, Moses, because if I hang out with y'all, I'm going to burn y'all all up. 
out somebody's going to die. That's what he was saying. No parent, you never said that, have you? Somebody's going to get hurt if I go. But Moses in verse 15. Come on, if you don't get anything else, get the part about God's hand is God's is his grace and get this right here. Moses said, let's all stand. I want us to get this. Let's stand. This is the last scripture I'm going to read to you today. So God said, Moses, I ain't going. If I go, I'll kill every one of you. I'll send Gabriel here. He can, he can go with you. Moses said to him, God, if your presence, get this, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. God, Moses said, I don't want a substitute. I don't want an angel. I don't want someone you sent. I want you. And if you're not going, we will stay here in the desert until you change your mind. That's what I'm talking about. That is the, that is the hunger that I want to have in my heart that says, God, if you're not in it, I don't want it. If you're not leaving, I'm not going. I will stay where I am if it's not you, God. But God, if you say you're going, and God, if you show me your goodness, if you'll show me your glory, if you'll go before me, and I can see where you're headed, then I will get right behind, and I will walk with confidence, and march with confidence, and I will know that I will succeed wherever I go, because I'm not leaving this, God. You're leaving this, and I'm not going if you're staying back. I'm going to let you your glory passes by. Someone here today, you don't understand the things that are happening and taking place. You don't understand the events that have unfolded in your life. And I want to tell you, do not grow weary in well-doing. You're going to see the goodness of the Lord. And you're going to see that His hand of grace was upon you. You say, Pastor, I, I would have loved to have seen it coming. 
God shielded you. You're going to see his goodness. Overwhelming. I believe God is going to pour more of him into your life. That's going to fill the desire for more from him. So can we in unity today just worship him for a few moments? Pray that the Holy Spirit just break out in this place lives, in our hearts today. If you need special prayer, I'm up here, Pastor April, come. We will pray for you. If you want someone to lay hands on you and trust God for a healing or a restoration in your home or your life, we, we will agree with you today. God will do it. But I want everyone, everyone right now, God is here.